Hey everybody, welcome back. So today we'll be talking about prisoner's dilemma. So this is a classic situation which is faced by the oligopolistic forms, uh, right? So what happens in a prisoner's dilemma? So there are two prisoners who are accused of doing a crime, right? And uh, let's say prisoners A and pr prisoner A and prisoner B. And now we want them to confess, right? So they don't, they are not friends. They are just collaborated for a project, not a project for a crime. They have collaborated. So what we do is we keep them into different rooms where they cannot interact with each other. Now we tell them this thing that, you know, if both of you confess for the crime, both of you will get five years of jail term, correct? If both of you don't confess, I mean, both of them remain silent, you'll get two years of jail term. But if one confesses and the other doesn't confess, right? So the one who doesn't confess, he'll get eight years of jail term. And one who confesses, he'll get only one year, right? This is a scenario. Now see, you see in this whole scenario, the best outcome is that both of them remain silent. Then they'll get two, two years of jail term, right? But what, ha what ends up happening is that they both end up confessing each other and getting a five year jail term because they don't both trust each other. And that is a, uh, uh, you know, uh, in this case, if you make a payoff matrix, you'll see that the dominant strategies for both of them should be to confess. <clears throat> now, if, if I try to explain with the dominant strategy, what happens is you have prisoner A, it has two choices, confess, not to confess. Prisoner B also has two choices, confess, not to confess. Correct. Now, if you see, if both of them are confessing, they are getting five and five years of jail term. So you, in the first bracket, you write five comma five. Both of them are getting five five. Then in the next one, prisoner A is confessing, prisoner B is not confessing. So now what, what do you write here? 1 comma 8 because the one who is not confessing, he'll, he'll get a more term, 8 years. So 1 comma 8. Again here, prisoner A is not confessing, but prisoner B is confessing, right? So prisoner A will get, I mean, 8 comma 1, right? So prisoner A who is confessing will get, uh, sorry, uh, prisoner A is not confessing, so he'll get 8 years of jail term. And prisoner B is confessing, he'll get only one. In the last, you'll get two comma two, right? So if you make, if you try to solve the matrix and you see, uh, try to calculate the dominant strategy, you'll get the first column five comma five as the dominant strategy. So both should confess for, uh, you know, for uh, for the maximum payoff, uh, regardless of what the other one is doing. I mean, for the equilibrium to come, right? So uh, how are oligopolistic forms, uh, you know, uh, facing this? Because, you know, you see, they, they have to decide whether to advertise or not. So they would be much better collaborating and not advertising and saving on their, uh, you know, advertising cost. But they always have this risk of that, you know, the other player will undercut them and they'll advertise. So they'll gain more sales, right? So they both end up advertising and getting worse off and, you know, uh, uh, you know, reducing their profits. So this is how prisoner's dilemma is helpful in understanding the oligopolitic market, oligopolistic market. Thank you so much. Have a